So welcome to part two, friends. Let's understand some concepts quickly and solve the question further. I hope you have already watched the part one, in which I explained the monetary policy. So that's very important to watch it in order to understand this lecture further. So please go and watch it if you haven't already. So let's understand the fun further concepts: marginal standing facility. In last lecture, I have already explained the interest rates, the cash reserve ratio. the liquidity adjustment facility etc crr as well okay so msf so it was introduced announced by sbi in 11 12 this year is important so years are sometimes very important when you read about these things because they can come as a statement and you can be sure about all the other statements but not this all right if you don't factually remember it So MSF is a penal rate at which banks can borrow money from the RBI over and above of what they can borrow from RBI under the LAF window. All right. So LAF, the next solution after the LAF is MSF. So interest rate of borrowing here is higher than the LAF. Okay. See here, MSF is a penal rate and it's always fixed at a higher rate than the repo rate. so this is also an statement but very common sense statement so no need to overburden your mind with these things a statutory liquidity ratio slr so slr is the percentage of the deposits which the banks have to hold with themselves again in highly liquid government securities so crr versus slr crr is is cash slr is securities all right just you can figure out from the word itself but both of these have to be held within themselves with the banks only bank has to hold with the bank itself not with rbi these can come as simple statements will confuse you very much in the exam if you do not already know about these okay what is base bank base rate so these base rate is the minimum interest rate of a bank below which it is not permissible to lend except in some cases if allowed by the rbi okay so this is a let's say restriction so rbi is trying to tell that banks cannot operate individually at per their own decisions how they do things rbi will fix the minimum rate of interest that a bank can use okay or which is not permissible to lend for them so this is the rbi's control on the banks Okay, so let's just quickly revise everything we have read this read from here. Just a second. Okay. So first of all, we understood about money. That what is money? Why is money used? Money is basically used to purchase and sell things or exchange things, exchange services. Money is all about exchange. there are two conditions related to money in a system there are people who have money there are products in a system that these people want to purchase let's say it's a car or it's even a packet of biscuits or whatever it is if people have over money they have so much of money then the prices of these things will keep on increasing in an open market open economy or capitalistic economy so let's take an example of diamonds okay so what's the what is the quality in a diamond why is it so expensive is it rare is it because so many people want to purchase it so the reality is this diamonds are not rather rare they are in abundance but there is a not any dearth of the people wanting to purchase it that's why the prices keep on going higher and higher and so are with other luxurious commodities but this also holds good for other things as well let's say a packet of maggi so earlier is to come for 10 rupees now it's 12 in future it will be 15 rupees 
the quantity served in each packet will also decrease by weight. This is because people love Maggi and will keep paying for this. But what gives the people ability to pay? The money. Now this is one example of such thing. But on a macroeconomic level, when we see through a larger lens, larger vision, we observe that when people generally have more money, then this gives rise to inflation. Now it's RBI's job to control this. Alright, it's also government's job to control this. We've already talked about this aspect as fiscal policy. But here we are talking about the monetary policy. So the two important components of monetary policies were the interest rates that this question asks about. The other things were LAF, CRR, SLR, marginal standing facility and a few other things. Alright, so this is how RBI will control the money going into or out of the system. Now let us talk about the interest rates. So these are the basic rates on which the RBI or central bank will lend money to the bank. And bank will have to pay an interest on this. Let's say this interest is 5%. So for every 100 rupees, the bank asks from the RBI the bank will have to pay back 105 rupees. Now, how will this bank be in profit or in benefit? So, bank will have to ask more from people. Let's say bank may have to ask for 7% interest. So, when it gives the same money, same 100 rupees to a person, it will ask 107 rupees back. The 2 rupees it will keep and 5 rupees it will give to interest towards RBI. So this 2 rupees is the benefit from here. So what will happen if the this interest rate is increased? Just a second. Okay. So what happens if this 105 rupees becomes 107 rupees? Now the banks will be asking more interest from people. Instead of 5 they will be asking for 7%. Okay, instead of these 107 rupees, sorry, uh, uh, for 7 rupees, 7% 7 here, I just missed out. They will be asking for, let's say, 9%. So, except for these 7 rupees here, now the person will have to pay 109 rupees. So, 2 rupees, even more. While the banks keep the same money, RBI gets more. This is so in order to decrease the money supply in the system, from the system. Now, people will have lesser money. And they would also not like to borrow from banks because the borrowing is made more expensive. Okay, so they will not like to borrow from the banks and they will also have lesser money in case they borrow as they will have to pay more interest. Okay, so this will reduce the purchasing power of the people. Now when it reduces the purchasing power of the people, people will purchase lesser things. When people will purchase lesser things, the demand will go down. When the demand will go down, the prices also go down. But with the downing demands, the supply also gets affected. So when the supply and demand gets very down, it's known as recession. Okay, that there is no growth in the economy. So RBI has to maintain growth also and the price stability also. So it will keep doing both these things all together so as to maintain this type of graph, a stability graph. So primary function of the RBI is not the growth, but to maintain the stability in the economy. All right. So this is what everything was. Now let's quickly understand two important things as well here. Repo and reverse repo. So RBI commercial banks, I have already understood, uh, sorry, explained this. Borrowers. Okay. So this is a repo rate. First, let's understand RBI lends to the banks on a repo rate. And then commercial banks have more cash to lend to borrowers in a higher interest rate. This is known as a repo rate. These are all, please remember, 
एल एफ टूल्स दीज आर ओवर नाइट एंड नॉट यूजली यूज बोरोइंग ओके सेम हेयर यू कैन जस्ट टेक ए स्क्रीन शॉट और पॉज द वीडियो अंडरस्टैंड अंडरस्टैंड इट्स वेरी सिंपल थिंग ओके लेट्स नॉट टॉक अबाउट द सेंट्रल बैंक इंटरेस्ट रेट्स सो दिस इज द मेन थिंग फ्रॉम अवर क्वेश्चन okay the central bank interest rates also known as the policy rates or benchmark interest rates is the rate at which the central bank lends money to commercial bank so this is what generally happens okay laf does not generally happen this is the base rate interest rate that generally happens it is similar to repo rate but it's more long term okay repo rate is short term this is long term interest rate it's tool used by central bank to regulate borrowing cost control inflation i have already explained this in detail and influence economic activity the central bank interest rate is typically adjusted periodically by the central bank's monetary policy committee based on the economic condition and policy goals so mpc you must have already read and know about okay let's move further on the other hand repo rate the only difference at the term okay and repo rate interest is higher than the central bank interest rate usually okay so at which the central bank lends money to commercial bank for a short duration mostly overnight like for one day okay purchasing government securities securities are also involved in this collaterals are not needed in this okay so it's one of the key instrument used by the central bank to manage liquidity in the banking system and influence short term interest rates By adjusting the repo rate, the central bank can control the money supply and borrowing cost in the economy. Commercial banks can borrow funds from the central bank by providing government securities as collaterals. So please remember this repo rate thing, LAF. The securities as collaterals are necessary. Okay. Okay. Let's move further. Let's see the difference between repo rate and bank rate. Bank rate is what the question asks. Repo rate is what we have talked about. So lends money to other banks. Just a second. ओके वन टाइम यू अंडरस्टूड दिस वेल इनफ देर विल बी नो नीड फॉर यू टू एवर स्टडी दिस अगेन ऑल एट यू विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व ऑल क्वेश्चन इन प्रीलिम्स स्पेशली इन मॉक टेस्ट ओके सो बैंक रेट्स आर जनरली हायर देन द रेपो रेट रेपो रेट इज लोअर देन द बैंक रेट सो दिस इज अ करेक्शन हेयर आई मीड इम्पैक्ट द फाइनल कस्टमर्स ऑफ द बैंक generally does not impact the general public directly bank rate is usually meant for dealing with the loans the repo rate is rate mean for dealing with the securities okay there is no collateral in the bank rate and securities that the commercial bank sell as a collateral so securities are used here in the collateral and there is no repurchase agreement in the bank rate but repo rate comes with a reverse repo rate okay repurchase agreement it usually determines long term lending rate in the economy it, uh, it's short term the repo rate so let's see the question now that what happened during the pandemic globally so this graph begins from about 2006 when everything was going fine especially china was doing pretty well for the us euro area that means europe and japan these are the major economies of the world we'll cover india as well later on just a second uh, okay so china was doing fairly well but there was a global financial crisis in 2008 okay so everything just went down but recovered fairly quickly up later on but this is in comparison to what happened in 2008 versus what happened in 2020 okay so this is 3 4 times as worse all right but everything was going fine during the year of 2010 to 2018 and uh, economies were growing on their own rate but there came to the coronavirus pandemic and everything just fell down so the question is not asking about this please remember okay it's just showing that there was a complete recession not only the demand went down the supply also went down so after this what was supposed to happen just like every other incident there has to be recovery in the recovery what happens the world economy would return to the pre pandemic output the pre pandemic output here would mean that the demand will rise again people would want to purchase goods again and the supply will also catch on but now what's the issue here the issue here is the supply is also catching on 
डिमांड इज ऑल्सो हाई एंड पीपल आर रेडी टू पे मनी सो दैट मे लीड टू इन्फ्लेशन अगेन इन्फ्लेशन और इवन द इन्फ्लेशन इज वर्स देन हाइपर इन्फ्लेशन वेर पीपल हैव सो मच मनी बट द गुड्स आर नॉट रेडीली अवेलेबल सो द प्राइस इज गो वेरी हाई ओके डिमांड इज देयर इमीडिएटली पीपल वॉन्ट टू हैव मैगी बट द मैगी फैक्ट्रीज आर नॉट ओपन सप्लाई इज नॉट देयर सो पीपल आर रेडी टू पे मनी फॉर वॉट एवर मैगी इज ऑलरेडी इन देयर द मार्केट फॉर ट्वाइस द प्राइस ओके दिस विल लीड टू इन्फ्लेशन so this is a very small example we can take bigger examples car infrastructure many many examples all right so there are further examples where people have to borrow money from banks in order to function borrow money from banks in order to in order for their businesses or demands to function but if the supply is not there it can lead to inflation okay so post pandemic what happened the global supply came back okay and now it's going just fine so there has to be a let's say stability in the recovery also stability in the recovery also and it is a good lesson for upsc aspirants as well let's say you failed prelims could not clear it so sometimes you would like to relax you would like to recover but let not relax become the laziness okay let's not leave the habit of study because over relax would also give laziness so even if you are relaxing even if you are recovering from the grind that you did for a year okay let's say you were doing good enough till here prelims came your mental state become like this your study habits become like this so it should not go into complete recession it should not go into complete over grind again it should be just a stable stable recovery okay so that you can do the 2024 prelims here all right so let's not damage yourself from becoming this let's not damage yourself from becoming a lazy person all right so let's come back to the studies in the indian study this was asked in the mains question also that there was a k shaped recovery what is the meaning of this k shaped recovery so there are two types of recoveries in indian economy one was let's say those people who were employed or employed in those industries which were readily in demand okay such as technology retail software services so there were some people again the travel let's say after covid travel did not start immediately it took some time entertainment hospitality nobody wanted to go to hotels nobody wanted to go to cinema halls and they were not also open immediately after the covid only the essential services were being delivered so this showed a k shaped recovery so was also asked in pre uh, means next year okay so this was a k shaped recovery some people recovered some industry or some sectors recovered quickly enough now let's solve the question so in the post pandemic recent past many central banks worldwide increased the interest rates okay let's see the question here now so let's take the rbi as a central bank here so when the economy is recovering there is again a uh, due to the demand and supply gap there is a probability of high profession or inflation so what would rbi do it would increase the interest rates it would increase the rate at which it lends money to the banks all right this interest rate will hike so bank is not able to lend people money okay people are coming for money but the interest rate is very much high again so people are not being able to have this money or not many people are interested in having this money this will reduce the money supply in the system okay and it will control the inflation so this statement seems to be correct central banks generally assume that they have the ability to counteract the rising consumer prices okay via monetary policy means so this is a monetary policy means this is the goal final objective here to control this and it's being done by the rbi or the central bank okay so this statement is also correct and this statement explains that why is it happening okay so what's the answer here that statement 1 is also correct statement 1 is correct statement 2 is correct and statement 2 clearly explain the statement 1 so the answer is d okay sorry answer is just a second a statement 1 is correct statement 2 is correct and explanation of the statement so answer is a 
just a second okay not d the answer is a so this was about today's lecture i hope you learnt a lot about many many things okay both the monetary policy fiscal policy msf lf repo rate reverse repo rate interest rates slr okay base rate so all these things we have explained inflation hyperinflation recession so these are the basic concepts of economy and questions are asked again and again on this anyway so it's yatharth here signing off have a great day ahead i'll see you in the next video next lectures have a bright day keep studying